Um, uh, I've never actually bumped into him within my time within the prison service, uh, but I'm aware of him. And I've seen the, the, all the, uh, the, the news items and I've seen the Facebook and all the YouTube comments that I've got it. Uh, and, and I'm looking at it, there's a huge amount of emotion based around this and you can see for obvious reasons why uh, the, uh, the emotions are there. Uh, the crime that was committed was a horrendous crime. Um, but uh, a couple of things, looking at it from a professional point of view, from, from uh, his time in prison and all that, when the judge uh, gave him his life sentence, he recommended that uh, he serve a minimum of 20 years in prison. Uh, and the actual facts are, uh, McCreevy, I think, was refused parole nine times from the 20 years up to his 45 years. He was refused parole on nine occasions. Uh, and the parole board this time have decided that his risk is low enough that he could be trusted to serve the rest of his life sentence outside of prison. Well, I think it's very much a team effort because uh, when a prisoner is serving his life sentence, he's going to be involved with officers as work as what they call life lifer officers. He's going to be involved with psychologists, going to be involved possibly with psychiatrists, uh, be involved with many, many people within, within the prison system, the criminal justice system, probation staff, um, and everybody's going to have some input into that. Somewhere along the line, when a prisoner is due up for parole, everybody will be rewriting some kind of report for the parole board to take note of. And parole boards very much base their decisions not only on the information they read um, from the different reporting levels, uh, they'll also be doing their own investigations uh, into um, the risk of that prisoner is going to likely pose or not pose uh, before they make decisions to parole. Uh, when, you, when you look at a life sentence, I think there's quite a few um, discrepancies about what people think life sentences mean. A life sentence actually means that you're a life sentence prisoner all your life. The only difference is judges make decisions as to how long that prisoner will spend a minimum term of it in a prison. So they might recommend 20 years, they might recommend 30, 15, 40, um, and they'll say you are considered you can be considered for parole at the end of that minimum term, but it's a consideration that the parole board take into account. That may or may not happen. They might not get paroled ever, or they may be paroled at the first opportunity, or they may be paroled at some time or any time after that event. Once released from prison, they will come out on what is known as a life license, and that prisoner will still be subject to that license until the day they die. Any infringement of those license uh, invariably means that a prisoner can probably be, will probably be, be called back to a prison and then they will then review that situation as to whether that prisoner will ever be paroled again. Uh, when a judge uh, ends up making sentences for prisoners, um, they're, they're, they're bound by certain um, conditions, certain, certain um, criteria they look at. And those criteria can be based about um, premeditation, multiple murders, treason, uh, and they put them into separate bands about certain people fall into that category. Um, the judge can then turn around and give them what they call the whole life tariff, or in other words, you will never be getting out of prison again. Uh, two class a classic example of that is young Lee Rigby, the young soldier that was uh, tortured and brutally murdered on the streets. Uh, the judge um, said that fell into the category where they could actually give the prisoner a whole life, give the two prisoners a whole life tariff, uh, which they did. Uh, but then they'll move down to another um, category where the whole life tariff is not available to them under the criteria that they're looking at for the offence that's been committed. Well, you, you, you're asking me a professional take on that. I can't make a professional take on that without having a personal emotional involvement in something like that as well. Uh, because if you're calling for the death penalty, um, the reality is, is that's something that doesn't exist at the moment uh, and that may or may not be something that comes in the future. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not inclined to give my personal opinion about whether I think the death penalty is a suitable and justified punishment uh, because I'm not here to have a debate about what would basically be something we're going to talk about on the emotions of why people want the death penalty or don't want the death penalty. Um, 
it, it's a really difficult one to answer and, and that's it, because as an officer it's a really hard place to be as an officer my job is to abide by the rules regulations and the laws that within the prison system at the time um, if people want to change that they've got their MPs that they can um, 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 go to uh, they can have um, debates they can uh, get politicians and, and parliament to debate it and possibly go to a referendum uh, and then get the law changed that way if that's what they choose to do but i see lots of people on facebook and on youtube saying people should be hung and strung up um, facebook is not the place to have that debate that debate should be had with mps through the legal processes and through the democratic process uh, i understand the emotions behind it i'm a family man I've got a family myself and I understand how the emotions we work about what we feel that we want but at this moment in time we operate within the rules and regulations and officers wear two hats when they're in prison they're bound by the rules and regulations of how they manage and deal with prisoners uh, and yet they go home and they've got their personal feelings uh, about some of the crimes that have been committed and some of the people that they've got in their charges um, but they're personal and they will stay that way. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt, there are prisoners that come to jail that can make changes to their lives and go out and be rehabilitated. Rehabilitation only ever comes from a prisoner. Prisoners make that decision. They want to change the lives that they're living. They want to do something different. And all staff can do, whether that's prison officers, teachers, healthcare, drug counsellors, uh, religious um, chaplaincies, all those people, we can help. We're here to help prisoners along the way and encourage them to keep going down that path. But it really is something they have to choose to do, and some do. They will open campaign and as I say, for the last 10 years or so to keep this man in prison. David McGree, they done all these terrible things to most children. And yet these Moors murderers and people like that, they're having to stay in prison for the rest of their life. So he should never even be thought about coming out. And, you know, with the way it's ruined my life, and I'm trying to campaign now to keep him in prison because of what he has done.